like living in prison and another four or five years to get your citizenship. So you've lost 15 years of your life, all right? I'm not willing to make that kind of sacrifice myself. And besides, for me, my inspiration was Zubin Mehta, the orchestra conductor, and Raza, the artist. So Zubin lives in LA, Raza lived in Paris for 50 years, and neither of them gave up their passports. So I said, I'm not giving up my passport. I've lived out long enough. I could have, but I didn't. But yeah, you will give a good 15 years of your life trying to get the citizenship and then working. Unless you can find some visa shortcuts, which is another lecture, but um, your question. I think this is the best question in my view because I remember uh, uh, I, I give talks around the world literally and I was talking to high school students in the Thomas Jefferson School in Virginia which is considered, you know, in America everything is the biggest and the best and all of that superlatives. So this is one of the best public schools in the US. And the kids were so mature, they were high school kids. And one of them got up and asked me, so do you think NASA is obsolete? I was like, wow, this kid really got it, like, bang on. He, he just, after the lecture, he asks me this. But anyway, to answer your question, the pioneers of any program, whether it's Apollo or ISRO, are very different, okay? With these guys I grew up, I could talk about art, architecture, technology, you know, the Renaissance, right? But the guys now, I sometimes hit a wall. I won't go into, I'll give you a hint. So I tell young people that frugal engineering is good, but frugal thinking is not. So I will let you deduce from here, yes, I'm concerned, but I'm also less concerned because a lot of younger guys are now coming into the workforce. And slowly when they get into decision making levels, they will think differently, you know, we all think very differently than the guys who are running the program who are more like bureaucrats. So there will be a vision shift. We need to be patient, but it'll come. So I think with that, we'll, oh, your question. Uh, multidisciplinarity and the challenges. Uh, yes, it is very, very challenging. In fact, when we first started the company, European Space Agency thought, oh good, these guys will give us very nice drawings. Yeah, like computer renderings for PR. They never thought that architects could actually design. But I think it's like um, having, being the conductor of a music orchestra. If you, as the project leader, know how the violinist and the cello player and the other person can create music, then you can run a multidisciplinary team with the trade-offs. We can, we can talk about it later, maybe, I don't know, in Indra Nagar, in a cough, on a coffee or something. But yes, there are many challenges. It'll take me a while to explain. But yes, you can work in harmony too. If you find it takes a good, five to six years to get to that music level, yeah? There's a bit of noise in the, in the beginning, but it works out quite well. Thank you guys, thank you very much. And I'm worried that three generations from now, maybe four, the earth is not going to be very habitable. So I spent the last three years of my life doing climate stuff, but you know, it's really now up to the little children to take the planet back because we have done irreversible, irreparable damage. I'm an optimist, don't get me wrong. But um, I've also been in places where, where I've heard icebergs calving, glaciers melting. I mean, forget all that, but it's really take care of your planet. Otherwise, there will be no planet left. Uh, I have um, to go to another I'm meeting. So, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So, the last Any few water, speakers, I would request water. if you keep it to five minutes. Otherwise, we will be sitting out in 15 ah, minutes. Good. So, Great. we, we expect that's why we need people like you to go to uh, Mars. So, I have Krishna here who covers uh, space for uh, your story. I don't know if you know, like, uh, uh, space is not, was not a very big element of the Indian media for a long time. And we are seeing people like Krishna who are coming up and covering space and learning more about it and building a career covering space as a part of journalism. So I wanted to like bring in elements of people who are writers, you know, uh, journalists also. So, Hello. Yeah, so hi, my name is Krishna. And how many of your students, by the way, in Rizans? That's great because I graduated just a year ago. So even I come from the I come I graduated from Christ University 
and I did a, I had a degree in ma uh, mechanical engineering. And since for two months I was looking out for a job and I was thinking, what should I do which includes engineering and writing at the same time. So I took up an internship at Your Story and I was working with a social story, writing about NGOs, social causes, but down the line I entered into the space, sorry, into the startup ecosystem. And I realized we are not addressing the deep tech and deep science startups. That is, the, that is the area of concern. And I went on my senior told, if you have to survive in the media field, you have to get out and speak to the people as much as possible. And the first story that I did was about Bellatrix. And I interviewed the SID, the incubation center of IAC, some of you might know. So when I spoke to a couple of people, I realized that the space tech sector in India is quite growing. To give you an interesting analogy, how many of you know about the economic boom of the 1990s? Like the ID revolution, I mean to say. You know? So, great. <laughs> so, if you go on, there was a huge revolution. You might, uh, you, you might know that there was a huge revolution, right? IT was a boom. People were not even, no one even realized that IT will soon come to India like this. To give an analogy here, India, where we are right now, India was right now at the 80, late 80s. We are at the late 80s of this year. In the next 10 to 5 years, we will see the economic boom in the Indian space sector. Why? Because till now only ISRO has been operating in the space sector. But now, as you see, if you see all the SpaceX startups, especially they are going to get operational by the end of 2021. Right? So to speak about more of them, what I've understood is that you cannot stop at one particular innovation. Right? Space is always a deep learning stage. It's how I quote it, it's a road to infinity. You cannot stop learning. You have to go in, there is no stopping at the, any moment. And as you, many of your students, I have seen that students are getting incubated at institutes like IIT Madras, IIC, IIT Kharagpur, IIT, and IIT Kanpur also. To give you here, uh, to instance, when I covered Bellatrix, I came to know about Bellatrix because I was interviewing the chairman of the incubation center at IIC. He told me about that there is a space tech company at Bella, uh, called Bellatrix at IIC. I was fortunate enough to see the laboratory. And to be very frank, things are changing. All you students, like if you have to get into this, I just have one advice. Get your ideas clear and sh start shooting mail to each one of these institutes. I did it. I failed. That's a different story. But I get recognized by those people. They come back to me with different ideas. I build a network there. So what I can suggest to you is like, keep shooting mails. Don't stop. There is no, there is no loss. And the second, I would like to talk about like IIT Madras. Do you know about NCCRD? Right? That is National Combustion, uh, sorry, National Center for Combustion, Education, Research and Development. So. Okay, are you going to get a lot of noise? Okay, just a minute. Thank you for the question. So, what else? Uh, so, IIT. So, right, so I met uh, one of the co-founders of Agnikul Cosmos. They are one of the few Indian SpaceX startups who are making their small launch, so small satellite launch vehicle, and making their propulsion engine out of a 3D printer. Now, that's interesting because all I can imagine was making a small car out of a 3D printer after two days. So, that was, the, and they built this entire propulsion engine in just 72 hours. Now that's an achievement. So when I spoke to the co-founder, he was like, he went across India to all the institutes, but he couldn't get a particular investor or not any particular institute. But when he went to IIT Madras, the guy called Professor Satya Chakravarti saw his idea and just soon as soon as, as soon as possible, he gave him the lab. Now that's where you need to go. You have to be a hustler because as students now you will be coming across a lot of events and now is the right time for you guys. Reason two, you, uh, many people at my, at my office, at my office I am the only one who covers space and many people around me are like ha having steered up mindsets, they tell like what is a new thing, many people are doing it, I tell no, we are not one among many, we are one among the few, that's what I tell them and because if you see Indian entrepreneurs in space tech are not looking at you know sending satellites to uh, orbit, they are trying to commercialize the space market, the next uh, the next version of commerce was commerce, e-commerce. I am telling you in the next 10 years there will be space commerce and the guy who will be rolling will be these guys. How many of you know about Mentra and Paytm here? 
Everyone knows, right? How many of you know about Mukesh Bansal, the founder of Mintra? Okay, so he's a venture capitalist, okay? He's a big deal guy, he invests a lot of any, you might know about Vijay Shekhar Sharma, Paytm co-founder, and he also invests a big time. These two guys, Mukesh Bansal, invested 10.3 crores in Skyroad Outer Space last year. And recently, two weeks ago, Kawa Space received a funding from Vijay Shekhar Sharma of Paytm. Here is the uh, turning point when these two guys, these two guys who are big, big time horse in terms of VC atmosphere, if they are changing their gears from commerce, fashion, and you know this uh, fintech to space tech, it's a point of signal that you need to realize something is going to come. And these guys are investing in them because they are not just telling that we will send, we will get customers like blah blah. They are telling that we will commercialize space because now when I speak to co-founders, they tell me we are looking at to, you know, <laughs> interestingly they are like they had an idea of sending ashes. When you die, they will send your ashes to space. Because like you will be closer to your mom and dad because like, sorry, grandfather because they are stars. So the next thing is like they are also talking about storing data in space, not cloud anymore. Cloud is like going to go out phase. They are trying to tell like they are going to uh, store data in space. A lot of things coming into the picture, right? And another thing I would like to tell you is uh, a very interesting anecdote. Sorry, I won't take much time. But how many of you are using GPS on your phones? Many of you are using because like if the next moment you don't find a bar, we just open the GPS and like where is the bar, where is the thing? Do you know that 30 years ago, 20 years ago, GPS was only used by the military operators, military guys? Do you know, do, do, have, you ever, like, have you ever seen, observed how a military based application has become a day to day application? That's where the entire thing is. It need not be compulsory that the tech that they are making should be with the military or with the government. With time it will come to your daily life. Even the sensor we are talking about. Now as Abhilesha was telling about using the sensors to tell about the pollution in your city. That was something that India and other governments were doing decades ago only for the national, you know, policies and certain things. Things are changing. And as a, as a, I thank a lot to Mr. N uh, NP here because he has been helping me a lot to connect with the right people and getting their codes, getting them, you know, uh, interview them. I also spoke to Mr. CMD, no, sorry, uh, Rakesh Ashibhushan, CMD of Antraksh, uh, as uh, Sushmiti, uh, Sushmita had mentioned earlier. So, at the moment, 350, uh, 350 billion dollar is this global space market. That's right. But India has less than 1%, right? India has less than 1%. And you have to imagine that it's, it is because of ISRO that has not much of its priority in the commercial sector, but still has less than 1%, 0.5% it has. Just imagine what happens when ISRO's NSIL, New Space India Limited has started already making small launch vehicles and they are getting customers, Spaceflight has uh, took some uh, bookings on there and many things are coming through NSI. Just imagine what happens when space tech startups by the end of 2021 or by the start of 2022, 2022 starts entering the commercial market. It will be a boom because many of, my, uh, many of us might not you know, observe it or look at it. But uh, just to end my speech, uh, my speak here, speech here, I would share one interesting uh, you know analogy that my senior at my office told me once, you know, two days ago. So it was during 90s. Uh, a guy uh, told one of the person, "Can you count the number of times you put a ball in the basket? You will be recorded, and you just have to count the number of times." He told, "Yes, sure." He did, and it was around 76, and he was like. Uh, did you count? Yes, I count. How many times? 76 times. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Like, are you pakka sure? Like, yeah, I'm sure. You know, what, when the uh, guy played the video, you know what happened? Any guesses? The number was right. But the moon, by the time he was putting the, uh, was, uh, putting the ball in the basket, a gorilla passed, just passed by him. Did you see? A gorilla passed just through him and he couldn't focus. That's what is happening right now. That's how trends work. Trends will come across you without even you letting, you know, without even your senses. Uh, are like, you know, like, yes, these things are happening. It was take the market like this. You gotta be everywhere. You gotta be, you gotta be focused at things that you really understand or really like. My last example will be, yeah.
Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, I have to cut you off oh, because I have two uh, others. is amazing. As we saw last night, it can also be unforgiving and it's really hard. Right now, there's about six people whizzing around the world in the International Space Station. They live there, they work there, and people have been doing that for since you've been around, most of you. The, International Space Station has been, had some people in there for 20 years from about 20 different countries, about 250 people altogether. When I was your age, I didn't think that was possible. Now people talk about people living on the moon and having colonies. And I think in the next 20 years, just as in my view, people living in space was almost magical, has now realized people living on the moon in 20 years time will be made real by you individuals like you so very briefly my story is that I was born in India in Punjab um, I moved very, when I was very young to the UK and I lived and worked and studied there um, in 1988 there was an advert that I saw. <clears throat> it said, astronaut wanted, no experience necessary. That was a bit of a joke because there was no astronaut program in the UK at the time. So there couldn't have been um, any, any experienced astronaut. By then I had graduated in computing as a technical degree. I'd done some flying, so I had a private pilot's license and I had a little bit of foreign language skills as well. And I thought, oh, I could apply for that. I didn't think I could get it. 113,000 uh, people applied. Nobody, uh, I didn't get it. Uh, very popular. But what's interesting is that I thought I could apply. Me, being an astronaut. Are you familiar with the um, imposter syndrome? Do you know what I mean by that? It's when you feel you're not really fit or qualified to do whatever you end up doing. I always had that. In fact, standing here, or sitting here in front of you with a microphone, I have not, nothing special to share with you. I don't have any special skills. But then when I look about what I've done, maybe there are some uh, aspects. So just four things I want to leave you with. Travel. And I mean that in the broadest sense. Sure, geographically but also in terms of India, in terms of your jobs and your careers. And that will give you a, a bigger understanding, a whole, uh, understanding in a wholesome way that you can't get anywhere else. And secondly, in space, you don't have to be a geek, an engineer, or a scientist. Um, although I did a lot of technical stuff, I ended up being a writer. Um, I don't know if you can, Niran, just hold up my book for me. I, the writing is not particularly te technical. And so I ended up being a writer. That's what I do most of the time. This, this book, I wanted to show you mainly because of the third point, which is don't be afraid to reach out. Although that's got my, my name on it, many people in the new space, industry, uh, new space community helped me. Rohan, who you heard speak, uh, speak, was speaking to you earlier, he told me, uh, he reviewed some of my uh, chapters to do with the GSLV. So, uh, the final thing uh, you've heard from Sushmita, reach out. You'd be surprised at how willing and helpful people are. Be bold and be courageous, and if somebody says to you, you can't do it, fine. You know, I've been in Bangalore for just a couple of, uh, well, about four or five days now. And when I cross the road, I'm like, I go take a couple of steps and I'm back again. And, 
It's very difficult. I'll get used to it in another week or so. But that's what life is like. You've just got to take a deep breath and move forward. And I wish you all the very best of luck in your futures. Thank you. Um, um, I have to apologize to Gurbir because I didn't give him his full time, but to make up for it, I have recorded a podcast episode with him uh, last uh, couple of days ago and it will be out sometime soon. So you can hear the one hour story of him being how he went on from being a teacher to then a uh, cyber security consultant to a space writer. So that's uh, his full journey. The last speaker I have is, of course, uh, Nikita, I have to give her the floor. Uh, she is uh, also one of the young people like Rohan that I've known for some time now. And uh, she recently studied in the International Space University for two months. And she got the Kalpana Chawla scholarship to go there for two months. And she did a GoFundMe campaign to raise the, the rest of the money. And the 35,000 euros that came into the were waved off or given a scholarship. So she runs a society here for students called SSERD. She'll tell you more about it. Good afternoon, so I'm going to take very less time, I guess we're running short of time. So I'm Nikita and as, as everyone like who all are here with the interest of space, so the same with me, I had this interest of space and then uh, like I started teaching at, at the school, like you know when I was in high school I, I used to start uh, teaching uh, very young kids and then when I was in high school and then I kept on continuing and then I wanted to do uh, aerospace engineering and then I did my engineering and uh, you know how you all are part of this program where you wanted to learn more so I was part of one of the conference that's where I met uh, my partner of the organization so Jayashree that is over there so so that's when we met and I also recommend you all to keep going and attending these kind of programs that's where you learn more and meet people who can actually uh, most of the time change your lives you know and uh, so we had the similar thoughts of uh, focusing more on kids because uh, I just have one question to all of you like how many of you are into this space like doing aerospace or something or yeah so others so you you have have an interest but you're from different background right so you know how do you connect your interest to space or people who are already in space did we know what we're going to study like most of us like didn't know okay so like like most of us did take engineering but we, you know we didn't know what exactly is in in it for example there were a few people who thought stars and planets and stuff they ended up taking engineering where you what you learn is completely different right so that was our main focus of defining what space is what are the different things that come under space so that students can decide okay what i like is this okay and then they take up the decision further so this is how we started and and also we wanted to give it in a really uh, uh, interactive way so we started doing workshops and uh, uh, we did our first space camp in India and uh, through this in fact that time we didn't thought of having a organization we were just doing as our interest after this program the kind of response that we got from both the parents and the students was so good that one of the parents said that you know you should do it in a really good way like properly uh, get it registered and all that and that at that time we had two options either register as a not-for-profit or as a company as a profit so I was a student at that time like I was in my fourth year of engineering and Sujay was working we had no plans of starting a company so so we just were like okay let's get it registered as a not-for-profit and let's keep doing what we love to do and it, it went on going and then after a year or so the kind of response and the kind of feedbacks that we got was so good we started growing internationally as well like the main goal was to teach so we had people from outside India who wanted to learn so we started teaching that's how we also started our branch in Philippines and now it's uh, 
you know, very much famous than in India because Philippines is a, a very small country with no space knowledge over there. In fact, a uh, few, few days back, uh, Philippines got its own Philippine Space Agency, like how we have ISRO, right? So this became our uh, another focus, telling, you know, let's go start focusing on the countries and the people or within India who don't have any access to space knowledge. Because these are the people at this, this is the time, this is the age where they start dreaming, you know, what they want to do. And if they have the dreams of space, let them pursue it in a good way. So this was one of the uh, mission. And so now we started giving space as one of the subject in the schools. And we have around 20 schools all over India. And we're also setting up space labs. So these things uh, have been more interesting for people around. And we recently got requests from Dubai and uh, Ghana. So these are the countries which are, you know, growing. So uh, in order to grow, we also need uh, help from the community, you know, if, if, if we have come to this stage in India, it's, it's the support of everyone uh, who came and spoke to the students who kind of helped. For example, even ISRO was part of our programs. They used to come and talk, interact with the students, uh, be, it, be it, you know, even in entrepreneurship side. So it's, it's all the community which will help a not-for-profit organization to run through. You know, when I was listening to everyone who were speaking here from a startup background, and we were sitting there from a not-for-profit background, and we are still working, it's something big, you know. Pe people uh, with a startup background, if, if it is working for more than two years and it's still going, it's really something big. And we, we sometimes, as a not-for-profit, you know, we need money. We need fundings. Until now, uh, we haven't got any any fundings as of now. We've been running it very successfully without anyone's support. Uh, to mention, we recently got uh, fund for around 360 government school students from Akshay Patra. And uh, so this this was so famous. This 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 news became so uh, uh, viral kind of thing. Wherein uh, the Kenes, the French space agency kind of shown interest on us, telling, okay, someone is doing in this field, you know, let, let's have them for France. So the discussions are going where we can introduce this uh, space program to France as well. And yeah, and that's, that's the time when, again, we felt sad because we were, we started in India and ISRO doesn't know about us because the scientists who were coming to speak to us were individually, like with their own passion. So uh, then we started approaching ISRO, we went to speak to ISRO and ISRO also kind of gave us a very good response telling, okay, you know, you've been doing such a great work, let's collaborate. So uh, we're working with ISRO as well and when I said Dubai, so we recently had discussions with UAE Space Agency and we have Philippines. So it's, it's all the connection, you know. Now, um, so that keeps going, you know, you all can be part of, you know, because when you're learning, you should always have something to give back. That's what is running our whole organization. Any student who comes to learn, he gives back by teaching someone else. So that's what we follow. Coming to what Narayan was telling, also Sushmita was part of the program. I'm so lucky and I'm so proud to tell you that uh, I was one among uh, the 120 people who got selected out of 700 applicants for this year for uh, Space Studies program. And uh, also I couldn't have uh, got into that or I couldn't have done this program without the scholarship that I received. And you will not believe this scholarship for an Indian woman is given by people who are not from India. We don't have anyone who's supporting Indians to do this, to do this course. Whereas, you know, uh, other people who are other participants coming from all over India, they have support from their own country, their own companies. So... If you tweet about it, we'll tag Anand Mahindra. He's been asking. Lovely. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in touch with you, so... Yeah. <laughs> Twitter, uh, I am. Yes, yes, sure. So... You know, that, that's something which is make, makes us feel sad, bad, as well as good because someone else is supporting us, right? So uh, we should keep on giving it, giving, giving it back and uh, I recommend you all to, to see what are the programs that you do as, as Sushmita was telling. It gives you, uh, because for us, space is just about rockets and satellites, which means engineering. Okay, but then uh, this course or this International Space University gives you the broad knowledge of where all space can be used. For example, you can be a, if you're a doctor, 
how can you contribute to space? If you are a lawyer, how can you contribute to space? If you are a professor, if you are a scientist, if you are an entrepreneur, you be, you be anyone, you be anyone. In fact, I had one of my teammate, teammate uh, you know, who is um, actually a designer. Now, she could also give back to space, right? So people from different background, a journalist, you know, uh, everyone come together, learn and put things together. Uh, yeah, even for, for me, I would like to focus on one thing that, you know, we can keep going everywhere, but uh, we have to come back to Earth. So when I say this, I think it's that the feeling that we are left out after the ISU that we have to take care of our Earth. Right? So I was also part of one of the team projects where you, wherein uh, you apply space technology for the problems that we are facing uh, on the Earth, particularly in urban planning, so I was part of that. So this has again changed my thoughts. My primary focus was on education, now it kind of slightly shifting towards urban planning. So let's see uh, how the, uh, you know, government or the decision making people would support um, so that's that's all from my end uh, it's called society uh, yeah. the organization uh, my organization name is called society for space education research and development in short SSCRD so if you would like to be part of it like teach or learn you all are welcome thank you very much okay. Up what's happened, what, what happened for two months without 